In this short PHP project, you'll learn how to securely accept one-time payments like this in your PHP web application. To do this, we'll use Stripe, a payment processing platform that allows us to integrate card payments seamlessly into our application. Let's start by creating a file called index.php. In here, we'll add some basic HTML for a simple HTML document. In the body, let's add a heading and a form that uses the post method that submits its data to a file called checkout.php that we'll add in a moment. Inside the form, we'll keep it simple and just display some values, followed by a submit button. Next, let's create the checkout.php script that will process this form when it's submitted. In this script, we're going to use Stripe to process the payment. To do this, we'll use the official Stripe PHP library. You could use the Stripe API directly, but using this package makes it much easier. To install this, we'll use Composer on the command line. Make sure you run this command from your project folder. Running this has created the vendor folder inside our project containing the Stripe package. To load the classes inside this package, we'll require Composer's autoloader script, which will load the necessary class files automatically. In order to use Stripe, you need to create a free Stripe account, which you can do here on the Stripe website. Once you've done this, go to your Stripe account dashboard to the Developers section, then the API Keys section. You need to make a copy of the secret key. Back in the checkout.php script, let's create a variable that contains the value of the secret key. Note that in practice, you wouldn't hard code a value like this in here. You'd store it in a separate configuration file, like a .end file. For the purposes of this video though, we'll keep it simple and just use a variable. I cover how to store PHP configuration settings like this in a separate video. Then we can tell the Stripe library to use this key by calling the static set API key method on the Stripe class in the Stripe namespace, passing in the API key value. Next, we need to create a checkout session object using the static create method on the session class in the Stripe checkout namespace. This object controls what the user will see on the payment page, such as the line items, amount, currency, and so on. We configure this by passing an associative array to this method. First, we need to specify the payment mode, which for a one-time payment is the string payment. Then we'll specify the line items, which is an array of arrays. Each element of this array will represent a single line item. Let's add one line item, where first we'll specify the quantity, which is an integer. I'll hardcode it as one, but if you were passing values through from a form, you might want to set this from a variable. Then we need to specify the price data. Again, this is an associative array. First, let's specify the currency as US dollars. The currency is specified using the three-letter ISO currency code. There's a list of all the supported currencies in the official Stripe documentation here. Note that even though these currency codes are uppercase, these have to be specified in lowercase in the code. Then we specify the payment amount using the unit amount key. For US dollars, this would be the number of cents, so 2000 would be $20. Again, I'm hard coding these values to keep this example simple, but you'd probably use variables here if you were passing values through from a form. Next, we'll specify a name for the product using the product data index, specifying a string value for the name index. Again, I'll hard code this to keep it simple. Finally, we need to specify a URL that the payment processing page will redirect to if the payment is successful. We do this at the same level as the mode element, using the success URL index. I'll hardcode a local URL in here, but you'll probably want to use a variable for the base URL here, so you can move the code between servers more easily. These are the minimum options that you need to set when processing a payment. 
There are others, some of which we'll look at in a moment, but there's a full list of available attributes in the official documentation. Before we continue in the checkout script, let's quickly create the success.php file that we just mentioned. In here, we'll just add some basic HTML with a heading and a paragraph containing some text. Back in the checkout.php script, now that we've created and configured a checkout session object, we can redirect to the Stripe payment processing page. The URL of this page is in the URL property of the checkout session object, so we can redirect to this with a location header. Let's also set a 303 HTTP status code before we redirect. Let's give that a try. If we open the index page, there's the button we added that will submit the form. If we click it, the checkout.php script is called, which creates the session object, and redirects to the Stripe payment page. Note how this page is hosted on Stripe's server. It is possible to change some of the styling elements of this page, such as the colors and a logo. You can do this in the branding settings in your Stripe dashboard. Note that in the checkout.php script, we configured the checkout session with 20 US dollars and a product name of T-shirt. These values are shown here on the payment page, and the amount of 20 US dollars is what will be charged. Let's enter some details into the payment form. Note how this contains client-side validation for all the fields. For the credit card number, instead of using a real number, there's a test credit card number that's 424242 and so on. That passes validation but isn't a real credit card number. For the expiration date, any date in the future is valid, and any three-digit integer for the CVC. When we click the Pay button, the payment is processed and we're redirected back to the URL we specified as the success URL in the checkout script. In the Stripe dashboard, if we go to the Payment section, we can see the payment that we just made is listed. Note I'm doing this in test mode, so that any payments we make are just for testing and no real payments are being made. Back in the checkout script, let's set some optional settings. In addition to the URL that's redirected to after a successful payment, we can also set a URL that appears as a link so the user can cancel the payments from the payment screen. We do this with the Cancel URL index. To show how this works, I'll set it to the index page. We can also change the language of the payment screen using the Locale index. For example, let's set it to Spanish. There are several different languages available, and there's a list here in the official documentation. Now if we try this, the payment screen is shown in Spanish, and there's the cancel link that goes back to the URL we specified. As we saw earlier, if you don't specify the locale, then the auto setting is used, which sets the language based on the browser's language settings. Note how we've only specified one line item. As this is an array, you can add as many as you like. So let's copy this existing one and add another line, changing the quantity, price and name. Now when we go to the payment page, we can see this additional line item, and the total price for both has been calculated automatically, with the price breakdown shown as well. As for the available payment methods, several are enabled by default, such as Visa and MasterCard, but you can enable or disable different payment methods in the Stripe dashboard. When testing this form, we used a test credit card number that was 424242 and so on. This passes as a valid credit card number. There are a couple of other card numbers that you can use for testing listed here in the official documentation. One that requires additional authentication, and one where the payment is declined. Let's try the one that will decline the payment to see what happens. So let's copy this number from the documentation. 
If we enter valid values for all the other fields, but enter that card number, we get a message on the same screen saying that the payment was declined. So the Stripe payment page takes care of all the payment processing for us, including data validation and processing the payment itself. As we just saw, we can integrate this easily into any PHP web application using the official PHP Stripe library. If you need more details, the official documentation is simple but comprehensive. There's a link to all the code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant documentation. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.